Yeah, because if Millbrook has been so successful in uh, marshalling attention to their water, that this is something that should not be under the radar. That's right. In, in Millbrook, they say it's all about the water. It's all about you water. What happens? It's actually, radioactive uh, hydrogen, and uh, we have a manufacturing plant here in Peterborough that actually uses tritium for um, neon signs and so on. It's very dangerous, and we feel something must be done about it. And first of all, you got to know about it, and then there is a process to go to a hearing and uh, make a presentation in Ottawa within t two months. Well, it gets into our drinking water. Uh, we've uh, uh, got a hold of some testing that's been done on apples um, several kilometers away. In fact, on Greeley Drive, uh, the number of barrels was far too high. Um, we don't feel that Shield Source actually does the measurements or releases the measurements that we need to prove that they're violating our environment. My name is Jeff Brackett, and I've been interested in tritium at Shield Source for a long time. They've released massive amounts of tritium, which is radioactive hydrogen. It causes cancer, birth defects, and genetic mutation. They have a long history of not understanding how to control their tritium releases. It took them years and years to discover extremely contaminated soil at the base of their stack, where normally you would have six or seven becquerels per liter or disintegrations per second. They had 1.5 million dis radioactive disintegrations per second per liter of water in that soil. And that came as a total surprise to them. How, how did they fix that? It took them years to modify their exhaust stack so that it gets greater dispersion and greater velocity. And they don't even know if that works yet. Testing is ongoing to this day to determine whether or not that's reducing the uh, the radioactive pollution in the area. So they really don't know what they're doing. And you know, best evidence of that is February 1st, 2010. I mean, they totally lost control of their process for five minutes and released 30% of their annual release limit in a five-minute accident. It's totally unacceptable that you have a facility like this in a public area at a public airport. Facilities that release this amount of tritium usually have a one-kilometer exclusion zone around them. And that's what's in place around the Darlington reactors and the Pickering reactors, and that protects the public. There's nothing to protect the public next to the Peterborough Airport where tritium pollution is being spewed into our air. Tritium being a, a byproduct of uh, our nuclear generating stations in Ontario and really everywhere uh, nuclear energy is used, that byproduct um, continues to spread radioactivity that should not be in the environment and calls attention to, uh, calls further attention to how inappropriate nuclear energy is. Mm -hmm. Uh, normal background of six or seven becquerels per liter. But if you're drinking from well water that's contaminated by uh, shield source tritium, that can be quite elevated. There's uh, surface water at a monitoring station 16 kilometers away from the stack that has had as much as 100 becquerels per liter, averaging 50 becquerels per liter. That's a lot of tritium spread out in a 360 degree radius from that stack. They monitor in one location 16 kilometers away. More closer to the station, 4,450 meters up the street near Lansdowne and Greeley, there's an apple tree where a couple of years ago they had 878 becquerels per liter in those apples. Or more would be six to seven. So that's just a grab sample of what tritium levels are like in the city of Peterborough, and people should be concerned. Thank you. No. On tritium, mostly uh, written in the early 90s, written by the nuclear industry, they're scared stiff of tritium, yet they say, oh, it doesn't matter, it's only radioactive hydrogen. Read it and learn how dangerous tritium is. That plant should be and must be closed up.